Hi, my name is Maria Espinosa and I'm part of the NLP and IR group at the National Distance Education University in Spain. I participated in this task together with Roberto Centeno and Álvaro Rodrigo, uh, which are also my thesis advisors. And well, since this task um, was already well explained, I am going to start describing our approach to the task, which was motivated by the growing concern on fake news and the potential dangers that this information circulating on social media might have in the near future. In order to understand um, the decisions um, that we took in the design of our model, it is important that we understand um, our main hypothesis. We aims to differentiate between the content created by the user and then shared in the network um, and the content shared by the user but not created by, by himself or herself, like for instance retweets. So what we tried to do here um, was to model user's personality and linguistic features by measuring their original tweets. And then other features of the user behavior were taken from, from other kind of contents, like in this case, the retweets. So the overview for this presentation is going to be, first we're going to explain um, how we pre-processed the data. Then we're going to talk how um, the features for the model were extracted and chosen. Then we will show some experiments that we did. And then we'll tell you about the results and the conclusions obtained from the participation in the task. So. First of all, the pre-processing was really simple and it consisted on the typical phases for an LP. So first we took the raw text. Um, this is an example of the, of the kind of tweets that we had for each user. As you can see, they were obfuscated. And well, we took those tweets and we applied tokenization so that we could uh, have a list of words for this, we also used a regular expression so that we didn't consider words um, that were less than three characters. And we also considered alphabetical ones, that is, letters. Then um, we removed these top words, such as conjunctions, prepositions, and for that we used a Python library, um, some sets that were already implemented for English languages and also we added some specific words that we found um, during the, the design and that we found on the go. So we, we were removing those words as well and finally we did an aggregation of the tweets um, which um, consisted in just uh, putting together all the words that we obtained for one user so that we only had a list of tokens uh, for, a, for a user. And that's all regarding the preprocessing. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the features that we obtained. Here you can see an overview of the complete set of features that we used for training. As you can see, they are divided in four categories that I will explain now. And first, I wanted to remind you that these features were extracted according to our hypothesis and were therefore applied differently to tweets than to retweets. Um, I will tell you in each of the categories, I will tell you which ones were applied to which sets of text. Um, so first, um, psychological features. After some research, um, we found that these features um, could really help us in the definition of the user profile. And after studying different psychological models, we decided to use the API of Simanto, which is a company of an LP to obtain one personality trait which will yield emotional or rational 
uh, regarding to to the user then some features regarding the communication style namely they would be self-revealing which would say if uh, one was sharing their own experiences and opinions second would be fact-oriented which which would um, tell if a person is focusing on facts and objective ob observations then information seeking which is someone which would pose questions and then action seeking which is someone which would aim to trigger a response on others and finally we also obtained a sentiment analysis feature which would return either positive or negative depending on the sentiment found in the text in the text of the user then we analyzed the linguistic features this is the largest category of features that we have and we obtained it using, using Polyglot which is an, a Python library that uses word embeddings and other features of NLP to solve tasks such as post tagging, named entity recognition, also sentiment analysis. After doing some experiments with many features that Polyglot offered, we did some feature selection and we took the most interesting ones for our task which ended up being 12 post tagging metrics, 3 named entity recognition metrics and the total word count of each user. Okay, then we also measured the Twitter actions of the user. The analysis of the activities of the users in Twitter was restri restricted because we only had little data due to the obfuscation of the texts. So we could only take four metrics available, which were the number of mentions, the number of URLs, the number of retweets, and the number of hashtags. And those were the ones uh, made by the user, of course, not the number of mentions of the user made by the user of other users. And finally, we did some headline analysis. Um, on the retweets served by the users, we decided to analyze, analyze them as if they were headlines, assuming that a retweet is more likely to be a news headline than a tweet. Some recent research on the topic demonstrated that fake news have some common traits that can be found already just by looking at the title of the news article. So we took the features that research found more significant, which were the number of words that were all in capitals, the percentage of stop words found in a, in, in a user, and the number of proper nouns, which we took uh, by using polyglot named entity recognition. Okay, and that's all regarding feature analysis data. And now um, I'm going to to tell you how we um, decided on these features. Uh, first, we did some experiments in which we trained several models using different machine learning algorithms to see how relevant these sets of features were. As you can see in the table, um, we tried all categories separately and we also tried all possible combinations of them. And finally, we saw that uh, for, for the models that we trained, the best decision was to to consider all categories and those were the ones that had the best performance. As you can see here we compare the performance of the different algorithms and you can see that Random Forest had the best performance in terms of accuracy and precision. Um, also in the last table you can see that the 
best performing features were the ones corresponding to category 2, which is linguistic features, and also psychological features, category 1. So we decided to use all features for the final model and also uh, train our model with a random forest classifier. Okay, before jumping to the results, uh, there are a couple of things to know. Uh, because we participated in the early bird evaluation as well in order to get familiar with the um, platform and also to to spot some issues and we did spot some. <laughs> uh, first of all, we we tried to add psychological features but we could not do it in the early bird submission because uh, since we were using an external API um, we had to ask for permission um, to the organizers and they also had to do some, adap some adaptations um, in the platform so that we could do that so we had to exclude those features for the first submission that we did for the early bird then also um, the separation of user original tweets from red tweets as well as the headline analysis data they were were applied to the model for the final submission so we did we didn't use those features for the early bird submission either okay and here we can see some results as you can see um, we had almost the same results in our experiments in just with the data set with us doing some cross validation machine learning our our results were very similar to the ones that we obtained in the platform um, for the early bird submission we obtained a 67 percent of accuracy and from the for the final submission we obtained a 64 which is um, a little bit smaller but we don't really know the reasons for these results um, you can see also that the best team obtained at 75 percent this is only for English because we only participated in the English language part of the data so we took the best result of the English data and we also mm, have here some of the results of the baseline so that you can compare and well considering the whole classification the, the general one we were in position 61 from 66 but those are the results for Spanish and English and then if you consider only the English language results we were 45 from 66 participants and well um, as conclusions um, well even if our results were not uh, the best in the competition we have completed a model which combines psychological and linguistic traits and also some behavior of the user and um, we have found that a very good basis for further development and also we have found that our results in development and test are really consistent which means that of course despite all the improvement that our model needs it is robust and the performance can be expectable with other data sets Sim since we didn't perform uh, fine-tuning regarding this data concretely and when well finally we have found that contextual information about the user combined with other features like linguistic features can be really of great use to detect fake news in social media and well for the future we would really like to um, train our model with using deep learning and of course perform further experiments as well as to use um, other psychological and psycholinguistic uh, models that would expand this dimension of our model which we consider one of the most interesting ones uh, so we would like to use some psychological models as, such as the big five or the MBTI for the future 
and thank you so much. Um, well, here are the references that we used in this presentation, and well, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>